As the spring of 2023 goes on, the hobby of one-wheeled electric skateboards finds itself in an interesting place. Since about 2015, the One Wheel, made by Future Motion, has been its own unique and strange rideable device that stands out from other enthusiast-level PEVs, personal electric vehicles, by virtue of its ride style and aesthetics. Ride it sideways like a skateboard, but lean forward and back like an electric unicycle or Segway. E-skates, more traditional electric skateboards, have little in relation to one wheels aside from riding stance, and so generally they're in a different world. A unique world with an equally unique riding community with equally unique style and sensibilities. Up until recently, a one wheel was a one wheel, and that was essentially it. Up until recently. The development of the balance vehicle application of the VESC project into sideways riding boards brought with it quite the change in how the enthusiast community, as it were, views, rides, and works with these kinds of devices. And that change is something that, up until recently, hasn't been experienced by most of the riding population that chooses a sideways single-wheeled board. Now, it's important to keep in mind that one wheel is a trademarked term, and that trademark is owned by Future Motion. So, if it's not made by Future Motion as a designated one wheel model, it's not really a one wheel. That itself brings up an interesting question what do you call a one wheel that's not a one wheel? Opinions will vary, although it is a bit odd to see DIY, do it yourself, made one wheeled boards be called VESCs. Mainly because that's not what they are either. Vesk, oddly enough, is also a trademark name, and that name is owned by the UK electric mountain board manufacturer Trampa. So, if you happen to have a Vesk based motor controller that is not made by Trampa, you don't have a Vesk. And that board it's in isn't a Vesk either. By the way, there is an entire video on this channel answering the question, what is VESC, that goes over more of the details of that nomenclature, if you're interested. So this board that I put together from a mix of salvaged and aftermarket parts is not a one wheel. It's not a VESC. What is it? I just call it a DIY for a couple of reasons. First, I've spent a lot of time building and repairing electric skateboards, and that particular niche industry has decently clear distinctions on what is what, especially after boosted boards ceased to operate. For example, production boards are e-skates made in a factory, at scale, with some sort of standardized design and assembly. Most of those are made overseas, and companies like Meepo, WowGo, Ownboard, and Xway make up a large portion of that area. There are, of course, North American-made production boards like what's coming from companies like Hoyt Street Skate and Lacroix. I'm leaving out the details of the boutique boards, which are usually semi-custom small-run boards that don't fit easily into categorization. Apart from production boards, naturally, are DIY boards, boards that are put together by an end user or a tech in a specialty shop using parts collected from multiple vendors in order to achieve a custom result. This isn't anything new in enthusiast hobbies, of course. Drones, planes, RC cars, 3D printers, and other devices often have rich communities of custom and DIY building that allow for more learning and involvement from those who love a hobby enough to want to learn more about the technical details of what makes it all work. Coming back around to one-wheeled things, what is this called? Again, I just call it a DIY, but it's always interesting to see the variety of names given to a new kind of device that doesn't have a lot of widely used naming schemes. The e-skate I ride is also a DIY. It happens to use a deck and enclosure made by a past version of La Croix that was initially sold as a DIY kit. This board has enough punch to accelerate me up any incline past 30 miles per hour, gets about 25 miles to a charge, and rides really nicely. It's what I've always wanted in an electric skateboard. This one-wheeled board is mostly what I want in a one-wheeled skateboard. I do have a one-wheel GT still, and this DIY has noticeably more power, does better on hills, and has a smooth, familiar ride feel that I've come to love from the older one-wheel XR, which I also still have. Which brings us to the one-wheel GT. Now, there is a review of the GT on this channel, and it's not a very positive review. That's not to say that it's a bad device, and I really don't think it is a bad device. The GT is fine, and a lot of people love it. 
It's a well-designed, decently executed product, and perhaps, as I've gotten more tired, worn out, and generally in poorer health, the fervent convictions I've had regarding the GT, and most things, honestly, have cooled and similarly worn out. It's fine, but it's still not the board for me, the ride feel being the main sticking point that I personally can't really enjoy. It's simply my opinion that the One Wheel XR platform feels better underfoot to ride. But the GT is the one wheel, and so if someone is just interested in buying a one wheel, that's pretty much the platform shape that is currently available. The DIY area recently has allowed me and many others to take the ride feel and widely available accessories of the long-standing XR and revamp its internals with more power, more range, and more adjustability to its ride action. This includes things like ATR and torque tilt that automatically adjust nose angle based on the ride condition. Think of it like automatic elevated mode that also does the opposite going downhill so you can have braking without tail dragging and sliding out. That, coupled with the increase in torque, is all the reason I need personally to just ride this DIY. Also, at some point, I can just take it apart and rebuild it if something breaks or if the battery dies, and that's definitely a positive. It's important to mention that these features just mentioned are available because it is driven by a VESC-based motor controller. Again, entire video on that on this channel, linked in the description. And so the one wheeled skateboard community is now, recently, experiencing what the eSkate community has had for many years already. By the way, there are also many frustrations that come with working with VESC that the DIY one wheeled board community is also experiencing, and so that's kind of fun. Hey, what happened to all my settings? I don't know, probably just a firmware bug. Reflash it and start from scratch, it'll be fine. Anyway, back to VESC. Even more interestingly, the upcoming float wheel also runs on a VESC-based motor controller. Not a VESC, that's a trademark name, but VESC-based. Anyway, that's obviously not a DIY board, it's a factory-produced board that happens to run a VESC-based ESC, and therefore VESC firmware. That's a first for single-wheeled, sideways riding things, which is likely to result in quite some brouhaha. I imagine because there's always going to be some litigious goings-on when it comes to Future Motion's wheelhouse, and also the natural tribalistic tendencies of folks when it comes to identifying personally with objects one purchases. But from the activity on the Float Wheel YouTube channel, things seem to be going quite well, and it will absolutely be interesting to see the technical aspects of that shape out into a shipped device. When it comes to PEVs, I tend to take cues from the eSkate world because at this point it's so diverse and seasoned that there's not a lot of new, usually. Still a bit, but not a lot. Most development is incremental, and that's natural for most hobbies anyway. The one-wheeled skateboard space, though, has seen a lot of new development over the last year or so, and that seems to be continuing with the upcoming release of a production one-wheeled board that is not made by Future Motion. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time because time is the most precious resource we have. Take care of yourselves.